election will receive our scripture reading. This time, I look to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. You know that I love to praise God's holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. To praise him, I love to praise his name. You know that I love to praise God's holy name. And he's my rock, he's my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. Jesus is the will, he's the will. Yeah. 
joy in heaven. Hallowed be thy great and God's holy name. Father God, we are thankful people this day, dear God. And we're so thankful that you allowed us to wake up this morning and start us on our way, dear God. And we're especially thankful to be, dear God, for leading us here, dear God. We're so thankful for each member here today and especially each visitor. We pray, dear God, that something will be said even this day that will help us and help us to uh, know more about thy word, dear God. And we pray that something may be said to make others just investigate thy word, dear God. Mm-hmm. We pray for the speaker among us, dear God, Brother Smith. And we pray that uh, the things that he has studied, he will recollect them in a way that he can deliver them in a way that's pleasing and acceptable to thee, dear God. Mm-hmm. And we pray, dear God, that you be with each ear this morning. Uh, and be with them and we pray, dear God, that something will sink in and something will be said that will help us. Mm-hmm. Pray for the sick among us. We know, dear God, there's so many. Yes. We pray that you will be there. We be, be with them and lift them up where they need to be lifted up, dear God. Mm-hmm. Be with the doctors that's taking care of them. Yes. And be with the ones that's on the call this morning. We have several that are sick from this congregation. Mm-hmm. We pray that you will continue to be with them, dear God. Yes. We pray, dear God, that um, after the service is done and everything, we pray for the meal that we're going to receive for the various from our body. Mm-hmm. This is our prayer in our Lord, precious and righteous name. Amen. 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 As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to cavalry, to the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on and through him I must win.
upon the cross. Yes, I knew it was the blood that saved me. Down in the side, they pierced them in the side. They pierced them in the side to save me.
also the cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ, which he was which was shed. Uh, when the soldiers came to Jesus Christ, they found out they found that he was already dead, so they pierced him in the side, which forth came out blood and water. And the Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So the cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for the remission of sin. So let us give thanks to the cup at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love that you have shown in giving your only begotten Son, who shed his blood. For our redemption. We're praying that we will take the cup in a worthy manner. We're praying all these and other blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
good, Brother Smith, when your family can follow you. Amen. And not just only my physical family, but my my church family. Amen. Brother. That's it. Yeah. And that's when it means something when your church family follows you. Amen. Amen. That, that tells you you're doing something. Because normally if you're not doing it right, they won't follow you. Mm -hmm. Amen. They be glad you gone. <laughs> well, my church followed, family followed me. And that says, it speaks in volume. My family is here with me on this morning. And they sitting in the back like sinners. Uh, amen. <laughs> I don't know why they said so far back. Maybe they tired of what I have to say. Amen. But I'm glad they're here. And I'm glad you all showed up on this Sunday morning. This is the day in which the Lord had made. You know, we ought to rejoice in it. Amen. God is a good God to us. Amen. Even in spite of the stuff that we say and we do, the places we go. Y'all know God is a good God. Amen. He's a loving God. Yes. And not only that, he's a long-suffering God. Amen. See, God is waiting on some of us. Amen. Uh-huh. That's it. God is waiting on some of us. We ain't waiting on God. Hmm. God is waiting on us. God had already planned to save us if we be obedient. Uh -huh. Our problem is we ain't through running around. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all get loosened up this morning. Preacher, bro. See, I'm one of them preachers. You ain't got to get close because I come down to you. <laughs> I want you to understand. God loves us. Amen. He loves us and he's waiting on us. He's giving us time. He's long suffering. You know, it's nothing we can do to get it together because only God can help us to get it together. Mm -hmm. I don't care how hard you try all that you do. You... In and of yourself, can't get it together. Mm -hmm. Everything you try will always fail. So we're just delighted to be here. And I'm going to try to do what I always do, but short, in a shorter time, Brother Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now, it wasn't that. See, 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 I got to be obedient. See, I heard Brother Clinton, I mean, Brother Smith set me up this morning. Uh -huh. He said, he said, and I understand it. He said, in order to be sweet, you got to be short. <laughs> I heard it, Brother Smith. I was looking, listen real good. I, I heard it. He said, he said, he said he's going to be short and sweet. I'm trying to be sweet this morning. So I'm going to try to be short. Now, y'all, if you understand something about Brother Smith, that's a tremendous task. Uh, I, 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 I can be long-winded, but the one thing I won't do is put you to sleep. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. No, I can be long, but you don't go to sleep. Because if you do, I'll wake you up. I have somebody to know you to wake you up. Because you don't want to miss this. It's too important for you. Amen. To uh, no one ought to go to sleep on God's word. Amen. Because that's how important it is. Amen. If you have your body, if you're visiting with us and you're not a member of the Church of Christ, and when I say the Church of Christ, I say the church that you can read about. In your Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not talking about the Bible that we made up. But if you have a copy of God's personal word, Amen. you can read about the church of Christ in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if it's important enough to be in your Bible, you ought to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Brother. I'm not here to cast a reflection or make fun of anyone. Amen. Yeah. I have a responsibility, and that is to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul told the young man Timothy to preach the gospel, be instant. In season and out of season. My responsibility to reprove, rebuke, and exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. Right. And I want you to understand I said doctrine. Because when I say something, it's going to come from out of the book. Amen. It will not be my opinion or how I feel. I won't tell you what I believe, I'll tell you what God said. Mm -hmm. And that ought to be important with you on this morning because. Uh, it is important to what God said rather than what man said. Mm -hmm. Jesus on several occasions in, on the Sermon on the Mount, he said, it has been said. See, people are always talking. Mm -hmm. But we are interested in what God said. Yeah. People are going to talk. And Jesus had to correct what people was talking about. Mm -hmm. Because people don't always say what God said. Amen. Irregardless if they carry in the Bible, irregardless if they come into worship. The Bible says God is a spirit. And they that worship him, thank you, brother. I don't like preaching dry sermons. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. I want you to know if you're visiting with us and you do not share in our conviction, our responsibility is to convey unto you 
the truth of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Now, I'm not up here. My responsibility is not to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. My job is to tell you what God said. Amen. Amen. And if I understand the way we live from day to day and time to time, there's some things that we do That needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. That won't make you feel good when I get there. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. That's all right. So I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm trying to get you to get your life lined up with the word of God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, mm -hmm. I want you to turn to Romans, the first chapter. I'm getting ready to go to work now. That's my introduction. Amen. Uh, I'm getting ready to go to work now. You only when a man go to work, he get paid. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Man, I went slow on that. Amen. Uh -huh. right there, bro. <laughs> bro, James, I'm getting nervous now. Uh, the Bible said, the Bible, the Bible said not the mother the ox, the tread out the corn. Uh -huh. <laughs> Y'all kind of got slow on the draw right now. Right. But it's all right. Because I want you to understand that nevertheless we, 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 we still obligated to preach the truth. Romans the first chapter, Amen. beginning at verse 14. And, Amen. and I'm going to try to give you a title to my sermon. Of course, I know it's a custom of us to always give you a title. When the preacher get up, he give you a title to the sermon. Amen. And, and, and I want you to know I try to stick to that custom, but sometimes in the middle of my sermon, I change my title. It and I, and I, want you to, I want you to know what it depends on. It depends on you. Mm, that's it. That's it. If I see some wrinkles on your faces, I'm gonna change my title. <laughs> if I see where it look like you don't quite understand or don't uh, uh, agree with the God said, I'll change my title, and I call it the wrinkles on your face. Because uh -huh. <laughs> I'm gonna deal with it. Because I want you to understand what God wants you to know, not just to know, but to do. Because uh -huh. that's the only way we can please God. Amen. Romans, the first chapter, beginning at verse 14. Mm -hmm. And I hope everybody has their personal copy of the Bible. Mm -hmm. If you go in the woods to chop wood, you got to carry an axe. Mm -hmm. And if you get smart, you'll bring a chainsaw. Okay. There you go. <laughs> 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 yeah, <all right. laughs> Amen. But sometimes we like to work, brother. Yeah. Uh, all right, now. In Romans, the first chapter, beginning at verse 14, uh, and read the writer of Romans. <coughs> Book of Romans says, I'm a debtor both to the Greek and the barbarian, both to the wise and the unwise. Mm -hmm. So as much as in me is, mm -hmm. I am ready to preach the gospel to them that are wrong also. Amen. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first, Amen. and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Mm -hmm. From faith to faith, and it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. I just want to stop right here because this is where I'm going to begin. And I, I want you to know, uh, uh, even to uh, uh, the Oakland Avenue or R.C. Baldwin congregation, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and I'm delighted that you invited me to share in your friends and family. Amen. But I'm more excited about your subject or your theme, Amen. which is evangelism. Amen. Evangelism, you know, and that's a, 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 a we've gotten away from that, and the church have taken a, a downward trend Amen. on evangelism. Mm -hmm. In other words, we're 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 slacking in evangelism, that's all right, and it right. needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. Talk to them, preacher, because that's the only way we're going to reach those who are unbelievers. Amen. So it should be something that ought to be talked about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Evangelism, reaching out to those. Who God loves and are concerned about. Mm -hmm. How you know that, Brother Smith? Because he sent his son to die for him. Mm -hmm. And whatever bothers God, all of bothers us. Amen. Whatever God loves, we ought to love. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. If God so loved the world that he gave his son, I want to ask you on this morning, what are you willing to give? Mm -hmm. Some of us are going to have to give up some of our time mm -hmm. in order to get involved with God loves so much. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know the church was always in some kind of trend. We find in Acts, the second chapter, when I talk about trend, and the church is always in a trend. We find in Acts, the second chapter, in verse 47, the Bible says, praising God and having favor with all the people. Amen. That's 
And the Lord added to the church. I want you to get this. He added to the church daily such as should be saved. That was a trend. God was adding folks that wanted and needed to be saved because they obeyed. Mm -hmm. But it didn't stop with that kind of trend of God adding. We find in Acts the 6th chapter and verse 1 where the church in those days when the church and the disciples began to be multiplied. Y'all see God get tired of adding. Sometimes God want to do some multiplication. Amen. Well, some of y'all get that on the way home. <laughs> see some of y'all content with adding but God is in the business of multiplying multiplication. Mm -hmm. God don't just want us to stay where we at. He want us to grow. Amen. Amen. Just like you want your paycheck. <laughs> you don't want them to just add something to your check. You want them to multiply. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get amen one way or another. <laughs> if you understand, if you showing up and you doing your job and you doing what you're supposed to do, don't just add nothing to me. Multiply. Mm -hmm. Show me that you appreciate that. Yeah. And God loves the church enough that if we do what we do, God will multiply mm -hmm. our numbers. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want you to stay with me. I ain't got to my lesson yet, well, but I'm coming. But I want us to understand good something. Because too many times we get complacent. Yeah. Think just because, uh, you know, we're meeting here. God wants these numbers to grow, church. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm on the inside. I'm talking to us. Amen. I'll go on the outside in a little bit. If I get you roughed up enough, I, you'll want me to go on the outside. <laughs> but God wants us to get busy. Mm -hmm. That's what evangelism is. It means to go to work. Uh -huh. That's it, brother. Amen now. It means to go to work. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Now I want you to get this. Those of you who are visiting with us, I want you to hear this. God is not slack concerning his promise as man. Because out slack. God is not slack. God, God don't grow weak or, or grow weary or God don't slow down or don't follow through with his promise. He's not slack concerning. Mm -hmm. As man could have slackness. But his long suffering towards us. Not willing that none That's right. should perish. Mm -mm. God don't want nobody to be lost. Now Amen. if God himself is all powerful and all knowing, don't want nobody to be lost, why are people being lost? Mm -hmm. It's all right, preacher. Maybe because we're not really getting involved. Mm. God, if that's God's will, if that's what God wants, if that's what he wants, why don't he make it happen? We serve an all-powerful God, and the Bible says it's not his will mm -hmm. that none should perish. Mm -hmm. But the last part of that says, but that all men come unto repentance. That's mm -hmm. the problem. That's mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with God's will. The problem is with men repenting of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And they can't repent unless they be told. Amen. See, some people don't want to be told. That's it. That's it. No conviction, mm -hmm. no conversion. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that we have to preach the gospel. We got to tell men, dying men and women, what God is trying to convey to them, whether they want it or not. Amen. God's will that you don't perish, you're going to have to repent. That means get your life lined up with God. Turn your back on what you like to do. Amen. What makes you feel good. Uh -huh. That's all right. Make it plain. So this is the problem. Repentance. God is going to show. See, if that be the case, then God wants us to repent. God is going to have to show us how not to perish. Mm -hmm. How not to be condemned. How not to be lost. Mm -hmm. If it's his will, he has to help me with it. Mm -hmm. Because everything I've been doing, I've been feeling like, thinking like, that is okay. Uh -huh. There's a way that seems right under men, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. Everybody is doing what they think is right. Mm -hmm. And we never check with God to see if it was okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So if God wants me not to be lost, not to be condemned, not to perish, and if it's real, he's going to have to show me. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to show me. What can he give us to separate us from those things that we do so wrong that we love so much? Mm -hmm. Y'all about to say amen. amen. Because there 
in lies the problem. Mm. If we didn't like doing it, we would quit. Right. Am I right about it? Amen. God is going to have to do something or show me something that will separate me mm -hmm. from the things that I do that is so wrong, but I love so much. Mm -hmm. That's strong stuff there for you. You know, when we love something now, it's going to take something to move us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Love Amen. can move us and motivate us. But sometimes we were loving the wrong thing. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. If the love motivated his, the God to give his son to die for us, what is going to take to motivate us to turn or loose the thing that we love so much? Mm -hmm. right. See, I want us to understand to separate you, yourself from something that you love and what God is asking us to do. It's like this. You know, the one thing I understand that to be a gangster, we don't have no gangsters in here, do we? You want to make sure you put your guns up now. <laughs> See, what they do, they have, they have a code. In order to keep somebody from doing something to make sure that you are down with them, get some young folk, sleeping young folk, you down with them. The rider dies. In order for them to know that you are dedicated and true to them, they'll find something that you love and they'll tell you to kill it. And that's what you're gonna have to do with the thing that you love so much. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, in other words, assassinate it. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. I like that. You're gonna have to put it on his knees and put the gun to his head shoot. and shoot it. <laughs> amen. That's what it is. That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's what happened when you got married. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get everybody on this train. <laughs> hey, hey, man, hey, 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 man, that's what it is. Hey, that's some things you have to assassinate to be a part of this thing. Amen. <laughs> hey, Amen. Hey, but that's what it is. We're going to we're gonna have to separate. But what can God give us? Okay. What can he provide for us in order to do such a thing? Because we love it so much. Amen. God gave his son. Yeah. See, God done his part. Mm -hmm. He gave his son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God had provided us his son. Mm -hmm. That's what he done. He gave us heaven best. He gave himself. Amen. That's how much he loved us. So it gives us a good idea what love looks like. Love gives and it makes a sacrifice. Yeah. It, it doesn't give what is easy. It gives what is difficult. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm trying to get you to understand to be a Christian, it ain't always easy. Mm -hmm. It's about giving what's difficult. Mm -hmm. Too many times we want the easy way out. But it ain't always easy. It's not always easy, is it? No. But then the last part of that, that whosoever should believe in him, what would God give? What would he provide? That whosoever should believe in him should not perish. That's right. mm -hmm. So if it's not his will that we perish, he gave his son, he provided everything that we need. Yeah. Our problem is we're not willing to obey him. Mm -hmm. So if we are lost, it's not God's fault. Amen. We can't blame God. Mm -mm. We can't blame mama or daddy. That's right. mm -hmm. We can't blame society. We can't blame the economy. We can't blame our government. That's right. They just part of the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. This is what God provides. So in the book of Rome, it helps us to understand some of these things. And this is why I chose this, to try to deal with evangelism and to deal with some of the things that we have heard that we can't find. Now, Paul said, I am a debtor. I want to start off with that. Paul said, I am a debtor. And I want to say to the church here at Ogle Avenue, we are all who are members of the body of Christ, who are Christians. We are all debtors. That's mm -hmm. it, Amen. Until right. you understand that you are in God's debt right. for him doing for what you couldn't do for yourself, Amen. you'll never be made Amen. motivated Amen. to do what you're supposed to do. Amen. We feel like God owes something because we obey. Amen. Man. You're in God's debt. Amen. And Paul said, I'm a debtor. To who, Paul? Both. Both. The Jews and the Greeks. 
the Greek and the barbarian. The wise and the unwise. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Seemed like he covered all of them, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's what we got to understand. To be motivated to evangelize our community. We waiting on them to come to us, but you the one in debt. Amen. That's all right, preacher. Amen. Amen. You in debt. And you know how we do when we in debt, don't you? Do I need to explain that? <laughs> If you wasn't so deep in debt, you wouldn't go to work. Because you love the things that money provided for you, but you spent more money than you got. I mean, you know, that you're making probably. You know, because I understand if they give us a 50, a 50 cent raise, we'll go out there and get a $50,000 car. Hey, man, just on a 50 cent raise. Oh, they gave me a raise. Next thing you know, you on the car lot. With 50 cent. <laughs> and the reason why you keep going to work. Because you're in debt. You owe. And you appreciate. The things that you accumulated. Through your debt. So you keep going to work. And keep changing your time. You're going to keep going. And get your overtime. You make it. Because you realize you're in debt. That's it. And Paul said I'm a debt. Until we as members of the body of Christ. We as Christians. Understand that we are in God's debt. Mm -hmm. He's done something for us that we can't do ourselves. And you can never pay your way out. Or feel like I've done enough. And some feel like they've done too much. But if it's anybody, it's God. He said, I'm a debtor. Listen to this. He said, so as much as in me is. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to preach the gospel to him at Rome also. Here's the thing. What's going to help us evangelize is understanding the power of the gospel. I'm talking about the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therein lies the power of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Without the death of Jesus, every and anything we do will be useless. He said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to what? Everyone that, but they don't. Somebody ain't going to believe it this morning. That's right. Somebody ain't going to turn and walk out just the way they came in. Because they don't believe. It's not that the gospel is not powerful enough to save you. It's you not willing to believe it. How much of it, Brother Smith, all of it? You can't pick and choose. That's what the gospel is. Amen. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it. See, so too many of us, we see people tell us what they believe and they practice what they believe without us saying anything. You say you're a child of God and nobody even know you want in your community, on the job, because you got your head down. Mm -hmm. You ain't saying nothing. Is this getting too rough for y'all? Mm -hmm. They're not ashamed to tell you who they are and what they believe. That's right. They'll tell you about the club they went to. That's it. That's oh, y'all ain't with me this morning. They'll tell you what they did mm -hmm. in detail Amen. and you won't say a word. Say a thing about the God. Because you're ashamed Amen. to let them know. Make it plain. Either you're right or they're wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed. Why? Because it's the power. Mm -hmm. The very thing that pulled you out of the muck and the mire of your sin is the very same thing that's going to have to pull them out. Mm -hmm. And you know where you was at. Don't nobody know where you was at like you know. Mm -hmm. Nobody know your condition and position like you do. Mm -hmm. And if God can save you, mm -hmm. that same gospel is going to have to be the very one that we preach to save them. Mm -hmm. No matter how impossible it seemed. Amen. Because you was in an impossible situation too. So Paul said I'm not ashamed. This is the reason why we ought to evangelize and keep preaching. Jesus says in Matthew the 28th chapter beginning at verse 18. All power are given unto me in heaven and in earth. And I like that he got it in heaven. 
But I like it more that he got it in earth. Mm -hmm. So if he got it in heaven and earth, that means you don't have any. Yeah. Your bishop don't have any. Your pastor don't have any. The pope don't have none. Mohammed don't have any. He said he have it all. My man. So they have no authority to make any rules or laws that you can't read in this book. Uh -uh. Amen. He got it all. That's if you're planning on going to heaven. That's if you're planning on being saved. Amen. That's the difference between being perishing and being saved. Mm -hmm. So if he got it all, we don't have to understand who we need to go to. We're going to have to go to the book. Because uh -huh. that's what we're going to find out what, what he tells us to do, where the authority really is. Amen. And I like the fact that God gave him all the, uh, the authority. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at it carefully as he tells them to go, that means he delegated to them, those who are called apostles, he delegated them authority. Yeah. But nowhere in your Bible you will find out where the apostle delegated authority to anyone. That's it. Amen. 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 We got folks, because they're in a position and have a title, they want to delegate authority to people that they don't have the right to. Because the Bible tells us in Daniel 2 and 44, it tells us that it gets this, this kingdom shall not be left to other men. Mm -hmm. That kingdom is the kingdom of Christ. Amen. The kingdom of God. It can't be left to other men. So we don't have no say so in it. Amen. 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 You know how it is when you, you know, I'm talking to the fellas right now. But you got some women play basketball too. You know, I remember the time we go to the court and we be out there and they're going to pick teams. Uh -huh. And usually the one that brought the ball don't get picked first. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, See, they laughing, ladies. Y'all get, get that from him when you get home. He got the ball, but you, you're going to pick the best people you can on your team. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get him because he's tall. I'm going to get him because he can dunk. I'm going to get him because he can shoot. And then uh, it comes the one with the ball. Mm -hmm. Little old Mikey broke the ball. Mm -hmm. And y'all didn't pick it. Guess who playing ball? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> you, <laughs> Mikey going home with the ball. Game over. And that's how some of us look at it. If we can't get our way, it's our ball, we going home. If we can't have our say, if it can't be like I want it to be, I'm going home. You'll go home, but you still won't be on the team. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help us on this point. Amen. I'm trying to help us. Paul said he was a death. Now listen to this. But I'm going to narrow it down to what he's saying. And what is wrapped up, church, and what he said that I like so much. He said he wasn't ashamed. Amen. For it's the power of God under salvation to everyone that believes it. To the Jews first and then also to the Greeks. For therein is revealed. I'm coming back to For therein, therein what? The gospel is revealed. The righteousness of God is not in the bishop. Amen. It's not in my mama. Oh, more I respect my mother. Mm. It's not in her. It's not in my wife. It's not in my children. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. Amen. The word of God. If it's not in there, then that tells me it's not right. Amen. Because God revealed all his righteousness in his word. Amen. If somebody tell you something that you can't read in this book, Amen. that means it can't be right. I ain't ashamed to tell you. Amen. Y'all act like y'all say amen. That's it, brother. If, am I telling the truth? Amen. If it, it says there is revealed is the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. Right in the book. As it is written. Amen. That means it got to be wrote down and you can't write it. Uh -uh. And some men have wrote it down. And they put it in what they call a manual. Mm -hmm. They put it in a discipline. They made a catechism. That's it. That's it. That's they have to write their own righteousness in order for them to feel good and to get you messed up. Mm -hmm. All God righteousness is revealed in the Bible, the Word of God. Amen. 
We don't need nobody to tell us once again. And that would get me. And then let me tell you, sir, I don't call names unless other folk call names. Mm -hmm. It's just like those guys come around that call themselves Mormons. Mm -hmm. They say you shouldn't call names that. I'm just telling you what they call themselves. Mm -hmm. I, ain't, I ain't make that name up. Amen. They have another Bible that they call another testament of Jesus Christ. Now, do you think God had to give us another testament when we're having a problem doing with the first one? Yeah. I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm having a problem dealing with the first one. And then you're going to bring another one? <laughs> I'm already messed up according to the first one. Amen. But the problem is, Paul said in Galatians 1 verse uh, 6, he said, I marvel mm -hmm. that you so soon removed from him another. We'll give unto you another gospel. That's it, brother. That's which it. is not another. Not another. Amen. But guess what? There'll be some of them that will trouble you. Mm -hmm. And y'all let them trouble y'all too. You know why we so troubled? We don't have nothing to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have not studied up in order to defend what we believe. Amen. I tell people, bring it on. I tell them, come on. Israel Hebrew lights. Mormons, Jehovah Witness, Amen. That's the five percent, or ten percent, or in the twenties. Amen. That's it. I don't care what percent you are. You got to be a hundred percent. You come over here. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you five percent, you got too little in it out of become. Be talking about messing with me, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, what they do, they come up with their own idea, That's it. their That's own it. righteousness. And they try to force it on you. And it'd be easy to do if you don't have nothing to defend them, defend them all. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm just saying. You, 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 it, it's easy to do. They just give you your Bible. And you just accept it. But it won't save you. Amen. It won't save you. Now listen to this. This is what Paul said. Therein is revealed the righteousness of God from faith to faith. So it is written. The just should live by faith. Amen. Faith is the same thing hope so, and evidence of things unseen according to Hebrews 11 chapter verse 1. And then it says in verse 6 about faith. In verse 6 is when we get trapped up. What did it say, Brother James? Brother James, 11. And six. Eleven and six, where you at? Without faith. Hebrews, eleven and six. All right. So, so I know we on the same page. They don't think I'm making it up. No, I want somebody no, no, to no, read. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. Hebrews, eleven and six. Come on now. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. That's what it is. It's impossible. Amen. And we know what impossible is. Without faith, it's impossible. Amen. I don't care what you do and how hard you try. It is impossible. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible tells us in Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 17. Brother Jack? Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 17. <laughs> I'm sorry, Amen. brother. No, you are. I'm in your no, lesson. No, I'm no, in your lesson. No, come but on. But it says that at the time of his ignorance, God winked at. Now he commanded all men everywhere to come to repentance. Romans 10 and 17. 17. Oh, Romans 10. Romans 10, 17. Oh, man, I'm all messed That's all right. No, come on. Oh, man. If I'm late, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by what? So then faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing. hearing what? By the word of God. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. That, that's what produced faith the word of God. Amen. That's why the righteous man shall live by faith. Amen. That's why the righteous man shall live by faith. Amen. That's what produced faith. The word of God. That's why the righteousness of God is revealed in it. Amen. If you're not in it, then you don't have the righteousness of God. Amen. You have the righteousness of some man. Amen. Jesus Christ, when he came here, that was the problem. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 8 and 9. He said, This people draw nine unto me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips. Amen. I'm talking about lip service now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all done seen it before. He said, But in vain. But in vain they, they do, do what? worship me. Do he worship me. Now, he didn't say they didn't worship. Mm -hmm. He said, But it's vain. vain. What it means to be vain worship, it means it's empty. It don't mean nothing. Amen. Why? Because it didn't come from the word of God. Amen. They're worshiping, but it's vain. Amen. What makes it vain? 
It didn't come from the word of God. Well, how you know that, Brother Smith? Continue to read, Brother. Mm -hmm. He said, but in vain is the worship me, teaching from doctrines and commandments of men. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to drop a few, and then if you, you got a problem with them, I'll hang around and you can, you can talk to them. One of them is once saved, always saved. Mm -hmm. That's a man-made doctrine. You won't find that in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. One saved, always saved. Then if that be the case, then Jesus died for nothing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Righteousness don't mean nothing. One saved, always saved. Now, once a child of God, always a child of God, but he can be in error to the point that he's lost. Amen. That's right. Amen. Good preaching, brother. Yeah, once you become a child of God, you'll be an erring child of God to the point you can be lost. But that one saved, always saved, God never licensed us to continue to do what we was trying to get out of. Amen. So you mean to tell me God called me out of a certain sin, and then when I come to him, he give me a license to go back into it? Mm. Mm. You know better than that. That don't even work in your marriage or your relationship. Amen. Right. But you wanted to work with God. Mm. Good preaching, brother. Good preaching. A little strong, but it's the truth. Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to get us to see. There's nothing to play with. It's real. Mm -hmm. That's a man-made doctrine. Amen. Once say, always say. We talked about this morning. I'm going to have to hurry up. We talked about baptism. They said baptism is... Not essential to your salvation. Right. It's not important. You can go to heaven without it, without baptism. But they never read it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. We have eight accounts of men being baptized in the Bible in order to be saved. Mm -hmm. And I know what somebody probably thinking now. Well, you know, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized. All right, come on now. Come Can I deal with him a little bit? Man, Have you ever heard that, brother? On, yes, they said, brother, thief on the cross oh, was not baptized. Out. I asked him, I said, what was his job? Mm. I don't know what kind of job he had. How you know he wasn't baptized? What was his wife's name? I don't know her name, but I know he wasn't baptized. You got to be kidding me. How you know he wasn't baptized, but yet still you didn't know he had a wife? Mm. That's my question. Mm -hmm. You know so much about the thief on the cross, but you didn't know where he worked. You didn't know. You didn't know if he had a wife. You didn't even know he had children. But you knew he wasn't baptized. Mm -hmm. All because he was on the cross. Well, he he could have got baptized on the cross because, just like us, we can go down in the water grave of baptism. We can mess up and get on the cross too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a whole lot of us have been baptized and in behind bars right now. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't hear me? It says, I hear you, bro. Go ahead now. How you know he wasn't baptized? Mm -hmm. Make it plain. He understood something. That he needed to be saved. Am I right about it? Amen. Mm -hmm. He said when you when you enter in the past, remember me when you enter in there. Mm -hmm. So you have to know something. Yep. Well, he wasn't baptized. Mm -hmm. I said, how in the world you know so much about him and didn't know he had a wife? Sure, you didn't even know where you were. They don't want to mess with the thief on the cross no more. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, see, it's always a way to deal with it. If you know that much about him, then you know something about his family. You know what kind of job or occupation he had, and, and come find that they don't know nothing, no more than he he wasn't baptized. How do you know? Mm -hmm. Man-made doctrine. Amen. It's important for us to, to preach the gospel, to evangelize. Amen. Because there's a lot of people believing in false teaching, false doctrine, and they think they're on their way to heaven. In reality, they still lost. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to close here. I ain't done. I got two pages, but I, I only got one. At my church, they know if they see two pages, that's at least two hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to deal with it because I'm going to close off. I want to deal with something that sometimes in our society we struggle with to show you uh, when it comes to evangelism, that means sometimes we got to say things that people don't agree with, but nonetheless we are under obligation to God because we're on a mandate to preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. The gospel has to be preached in order for people to be saved. Now, then one of the problems that we have in our society that we so acceptable for, I don't know if it's because the women are running the men or, or running away from them. I don't know which one it is. But the Bible, we, we come to the point in the church now that in a society that want women to preach. Mm. They do enough at home preaching. Mm. Now yeah. you want to come out in public and preach. Okay. Deal with it, I know my preach at home. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. I understand me and if y'all don't say nothing. Because you got to go home with them. Amen. <laughs> 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 Amen. 
But our society got to the point that we want to be sensitive to everybody need. Mm -hmm. There's some other things I can talk about too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Obama Nation help y'all out. Mm -hmm. On one of the problems. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But I'm not going to talk about that. Well, this I Brother no, I, I ain't going to touch that, but I want to talk about these women preachers. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's being prominent now, Brother Smith. And it, it, like the men got to be held up by their wives in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. I say amen, and I ain't scared. I ain't scared, bro. Go ahead. Amen. To get to the point that sometimes we're just taking a second look at it now. Mm -hmm. Amen. I get my best sermon sometimes from my wife, mm -hmm. but I be the one preaching. Hey, yeah. There you go. Hey, 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 man. Go ahead, go ahead. Amen. Go ahead it ain't always what she say is what she be telling me yeah. that telling me what I ought to do, and then I go to preach it, and then I come and lay it on the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I said some things I got to do. I got this sermon from a white. They said, Brother Smith, that's a good sermon. I said, Yeah, because I got to live it. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. And that's what we have. We we, we become sensitive to what people desire. Mm -hmm. And they try to take the common plain sense approach to say, well, being that, it's more women in the church than men. Y'all okay. right. heard Break that. Come on now. Yeah. More women. I mean, it's more women in my house, but I know who run it. Amen. Amen. All right now. All right now. All right. I'm just Come on now. I got all them women in the house. Y'all know anything about Isaac Hayes when he said a house full of women? That song, okay. Go ahead, I might have went over some of my head now. That brother right there, right, right there. With me. Say, Amen. Man, I got more women in the house than it is me, but I know who the boss. I I know when I put my foot in, I know who to serve. That's right. Y'all can't take over because there's more than y'all here because I will stop paying our bills. <laughs> Amen. You make them do it. Mm -hmm. You tell you make them at home, don't you? Oh, see, I, see, see, I can tell when we don't like this plain preaching because it's tough. Amen. Yeah, you make them at home. You you do. That's it. That's Man, it. you got to get up here and do something. Exactly. You ain't gonna get up and wash your behind. <laughs> Amen. Get a job. Get a job. <laughs> Mow the yard. <laughs> Fix the car. You make them do it. You don't go out there and do it, do you? Well, if you ain't going to fix the car, I'm going to clam up in here in this mold and get all this grease on me. I'll fix it. No, you don't. You say, what you going to do? You make them be a man. Amen. That's it, brother. Amen. Yep. Amen. Good preaching. If you don't, I found one that'll do it. Amen. <laughs> That's a chip off the old block right there. <laughs> Amen. But when it comes to the church, we get passive. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, brother. Now, I would just want to share with you, if you got your Bible to read, I don't know if anybody got a, a female pastor, preacher, bishop, or whatever it is. Let's just deal with it. I'm going to shut it down, Brother Smith. Amen. Amen. Can, can I come back, Brother Smith? Can I come Amen. back? Okay, he said, yeah. He said, yeah. Amen. I already got Amen. my, yeah. Listen to this. And, and First Timothy, let's look at this. If you got your Bible, I'm going to deal with just this one, but that's plenty of them. A uh, men made doctrine that we're dealing with that keeps us all wrapped up and wrong in the sight of God. Amen. So let, let's just deal, deal with this a little bit. Now, I'm not saying women ain't important in the church because they are. Amen. Women important, period. Mm -hmm. Period. I love women. Amen. Amen. I don't chase all of them, but I love them. Amen. I only chase one. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm still trying to get her to slow down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, I'm, I mean, women are important. We, it couldn't be men without women. Amen. So I'm not saying women are not important. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Amen. They're very important. Mm -hmm. They are part of God's plan. Amen. Mm -hmm. But God didn't give them the position to preach. Amen. Amen. In public or uh, assembly. No with men. He didn't give them that. Now let's deal with that. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. First Timothy. First Timothy. Looking about round the first chapter, second chapter, I'm sorry. Okay. And I want us to get this. 
Brother James, you help me out now. Okay. Start at verse 3. And start at 3. Now I want y'all to listen now. I'm talking about women pe preaching in public assembly along with men. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're preaching to the audience of God's people. Mm -hmm. And listen to your Bible. Mm -hmm. I didn't put this in here. And if you go to your, it's going to be in your. Amen. Brother James, read. Amen. But this is a good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Now, he, now listen. He won't, wait a minute, knowledge. Brother James. Okay. He won't, well, as we said in the book of Peter, it's not his will that none should perish, mm -hmm. but all come unto repentance, right? God won't you say. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Amen. that's what it's saying here. Mm -hmm. Now, listen. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth. But there is one God. One God. Amen. One mediator between one, God and One heaven. mediator. That's Christ. Amen. Come and on. And man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Amen. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher. Who? A preacher. A preacher. A preacher. Come on. And an apostle. Come on. And I speak truth in Christ and by not. Paul said, I don't lie. That's right. He said, I lie not. not. Mm -hmm. Because if he want man to be saved, Paul said, I lie not. You can't tell a lie and expect people to be saved. Mm -hmm. So he's getting that straight. Mm -hmm. Come on, Brother mm -hmm. James. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and virtue. I would therefore that men pray everywhere. Okay. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also. In like that, manner. The oh, women so. adore themselves. He, now he's telling what women are. Okay, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, bro. Okay. Okay. I want them to run on with this now. Okay. Okay. Now he told men to lift up holy hands. <laughs> Teaching everywhere, preaching everywhere. He said in the like manner. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to say just like that situation that they're in. Not doing the same thing, but in the same manner. Do what? Now read. Okay. With uh, shamefacedness and sobriety. Sobriety. Not with braided hair, not with braided or hair. gold, or pearls, or costly array. Now, he's not telling you you can't dress yourself up now. That's right. He said don't overdress. Don't overdress. And then don't underdress. Amen. <laughs> oh, see, some of y'all didn't get it. Y'all going to make me preach up in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to explain this. I'm trying to explain this. I'm trying to exegete this thing out. He said, women, don't draw no attention to yourself by doing all this fancy stuff with your hair and your clothes. It's all right to dress up and look nice because that's the way we want you to look. Amen. You ain't got to come in here with a chicken feed sack dress on, but you can dress yourself up, make yourself look nice and modest. Mm -hmm. Don't overdo it Amen. with your hair 10 foot high now. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, brother. Read this way. But then on the other hand, don't underdress. Amen. Oh, I got I'll scat you. Don't underdress me. We want to worship. Don't get these brothers no problem. <laughs> Y'all get me? Don't give them no problem. I've seen too many brothers having problems passing the communion because you got your thighs out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Make it plain. The tray way down here, he's still standing here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't underdress and don't overdo it. Amen. I want to keep this thing in the road, bro. Amen. Come on, read. I mean, I mean, I'm trying to help us out. Amen. Come on, bro. But which come of women professing godliness? How they gonna do work. it? How, how they gonna do it? He said, let the women learn in silence. They gonna learn how? Y'all know what silence is. Oh, 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 bro, don't get too bad now. Okay. Okay. You know, when you tell women to be silent now, you know you got a problem. Yes, <laughs> the Bible said, let the women do what? Learn. Learn in silence. In silence. I didn't say that. God said that. And if you're going to get upset with that, you got to take it up with God. Amen. He said, let the women learn, learn in, silence. in silence. If I told you to shut up, you get mad. I didn't tell you to be quiet. He said, let the women learn in silence. That came out of your Bible if you dare. Amen. Amen. Let the women learn in silence. Mm -hmm. Now, how can she preach if she's to be silent? Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Now, y'all be helping me with that. I ain't going nowhere. After we get done, you can pull me to the side. I ain't going to embarrass you. I ain't going to show you out or nothing like that. I'll talk to you. He said, let the women learn their silence. How? With all with, subjection. With, with all? All subjection. All of them. All of them. All of them. Come on. Keep reading. But I suffer not a woman to I, teach. I suffer a woman not to teach. Now, how is she going to preach if she can't teach? Help me, y'all. That's in your Bible. I didn't put that in there. Amen. I remember I was talking to a seven-day Adventist, and he was talking to me, and he said, he said how did that get in there? <laughs> no, he didn't. He had, a, he had a hell in it, too. Mm. Mm. That's how Satan can blind your mind, your eyes. He had a hell in his Bible. He said, how did that get in there? I said, God put it in there for people like you trying to tell me what he didn't say. Mm. Mm. Amen. Right. Come on, read, brother. He said, nor, were, nor to uh, usurp authority. Nor, you know what usurp authority means? Don't take your authority over a man. Right now, he's talking about in the church. Mm-hmm. In the assembly. Mm-hmm. Don't take the authority. Women, don't take the authority over the men. Amen. And when he's in that pulpit preaching that gospel, he has the authority. Amen. There's no more authority than that. Amen. <laughs> she can't take it. Yes, I'm going to deal with something. Go ahead and read. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to serve authority over, over the man, man, but be in silence. There you go again. I told you to be quiet again. Quiet well, Adam is first. And you, now, wait a minute. Now, brother Greg getting too bad. Now he's going to explain to you why. Because mm-hmm. you would like to know why. When I tell, I know if I tell somebody something like that, why? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why I got to shut up? <laughs> he's going to tell you why. Come on now. For Adam was first born. For Adam was first here. Adam yeah, he, was a, wait a minute, Brother Greg. Okay. You're getting too fast on me now. <laughs> Adam was a man. Amen. Amen. He was a male man. Because it was his job to deliver the mail. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all get down the way. Mm-hmm. Because God, he had to tell me what to do. Come on, brother. Some of them get that on the way home. That's it. Adam was a man. He was first formed. God formed man, the male first. Mm-hmm. Woman came out of her. She came second. Mm-hmm. Don't mean she less important. That's right. But she wasn't first made. Because that's, right. that's why he explained it. Because he's telling them why they need to be silent. That's it. I didn't say it. Your Bible said it. Come on, now you can read, brother. Okay. Then he said, Adam was first formed, then Eve. Then Eve. Come and on. Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived oh, was no, in no, what, uh, Yeah, but you're holding now. Women don't think they can be deceived. <laughs> yeah. Adam wasn't the one that was being deceived by the serpent. If you know your Bible, and I know y'all went to Sunday school. Mm-hmm. Who ate that apple? <laughs> Nobody. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might be shopping now, Brother Smith. Shop. It wasn't an apple. It wasn't an apple. It was a fruit. It was a fruit. We're going to send you back to Sunday school, brother. I know, right? <laughs> it was a fruit. It was a fruit. Was all and Eve ate. was the one that partook of it first. That's it. And the Bible tells us that. That's it. And when she partook of that fruit because, fruit because the devil was talking to her and she was talking to somebody she ain't got no business talking to, mm-hmm. a false teacher, mm-hmm. and told her that she should not surely die, mm-hmm. she believed it. And she started looking at that fruit differently. See, when somebody tells you something, you're already liking it anyhow. Now you just need a reason. Then she started looking at it different. She said, well, it is good for food. Mm-hmm. Well, he said, you got the whole garden. Ain't you got enough to eat? She said, well, it's good. She started looking at it side different. Yeah. And she took up that fruit. And guess what she did? She gave it to her husband. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong too. If you love me. Come on, son, Jane. Come get with me now. If, if you love me, you eat it. Get what, men? We still eat. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Love will make you do some funny things, Brother Smith. If you ain't careful. That's right. Now, if I think Brother Smith, the oldest one here, if he said it, it got to be right. But he's still eating. 
<laughs> Listen. She was the first one in transgression. That's why she used to be in silence. Now, I didn't say that. That's what the Bible said. But yet still, now we think it's okay because you ain't got enough men to do it. It, it seems reasonable to just go ahead and put a woman up there. Now, I know some women that can flat out down preach most men. But they're in violation of scripture if they do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I know some that can outdo me. But they be in violation of the scriptures. Amen. Mm -hmm. Which is able to save their soul. If they do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you'll be lost with them if you follow. Because you all when you show up, while they preaching, all you're saying is amen. Okay, yeah. It's all right. No matter what God said. No matter what First Timothy, the eleventh, uh, First Timothy, first chapter, uh, uh, first, cha uh, first chapter, verse eleven say it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We ain't gonna follow the Bible today. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a problem mm -hmm. when it comes to us to stand before the judgment bar of God. Amen. That's all I'm saying. I'm not casting a reflection. I'm just trying to get you to understand the importance of the gospel. It's the only power of God to save mankind. It's the only thing. Amen. And if we neglect not to do what it says, we'll be lost. Amen. Brother Smith, what am I going to have to do in order to be saved, to be a member of the church of Christ, the one that Jesus Christ died for, the one about you can read about in your Bible? You're going to have to first hear the gospel. Amen. That's the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're going to have to hear that. Amen. You're going to have to believe that's what happened. Amen. Jesus died. Amen. They buried him. He rose on the third day. Mm -hmm. Now he sits at the right hand of God in heaven. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to be willing to repent of your sins. Repentance means to have a change of mind that will bring forth a change of action in your life. Amen. In other words, it means to turn your back on the thing that you love doing so wrong. Mm -hmm. I ain't said always to you, but if you want to go to heaven, you'll do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Nobody have to convince you. If you understand how wonderful heaven it will be, it, you'll do it on your own accord. That's it. That's it. Nobody had to coerce you, beg you, drag you. You just want to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God will be there. My Savior will be there. Maybe some of my family members will be there. It would be a sad thing for you to miss out. All because they was willing to obey what the Bible says. You have to repent. At this time of ignorance, God winked at it, but now he commanded all men everywhere to repent. Not just some people, but everybody has to do it. Why? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. Not one person, but everybody have to repent. Then you have to make the confession that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That confession brought death to Jesus. And they knew they were. They, they crucified him. He was telling them, but they didn't. Say, dude. It was best. You got to make the confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That confession is made with your mouth. And last but not least, you need to be baptized in water for the remission of sins, according to Acts 2 and 30. Amen. Amen. You know, when you go over there and read Acts, the second chapter, the first gospel sermon that was ever preached after the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the first sermon that was ever preached now, Peter preached it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it says, beginning at verse 36, it said, Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Like this, Lord and Christ. Lord means to have com command over your soul. And Christ, who is your Savior. God made them that. And when they heard this, the Bible said they were pricked in their hearts. And they asked Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, Repent. And be baptized, Amen. every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Amen. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and all them that are fall, even as many our Lord our God shall call. With many other words, he exhort and testify, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. And they that gladly received the word was baptized. That's it. That's it. That's it. I said they gladly received it because they know it was right. Mm -hmm. If you know it's right, you ought to obey it. Amen. 
I wouldn't go home the way I came. For the last person that I read of in the Bible that went home the way he came was the rich man who asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He had so much possession when Jesus said, sell all your possessions and give it to the poor. He said he went away sorrowful because he thought it was too much to give up to get what he wanted. Amen. Don't be like that rich young man. Don't be like him. Amen. What will a man give in exchange of himself? Your soul is the most precious thing on this earth. Good preacher, brother. I wouldn't give it up for nothing. Amen. It's more valuable than anything. Are you willing to trade it out this morning? For whatever you got to go back home to, go back into? It's not worth it. Your soul is precious. Amen. Very precious. So precious to God that he gave his son. Amen. And if you're hearing you straight away, you ain't been living quite like you ought to be. Amen. You're a child of God and you straight away and you're doing things and you slip back into the beggarly elements of the world, back into the muck and mouth, shame and humiliation, you can come back. That's the most wonderful thing about God. If we confess our fault one to another, he is just to forgive us. Amen. That's the wonderful thing. He's Amen. not a second chance God. He, he's a third, fourth, fifth. Whenever you're willing and ready, he's ready. That's what I like about him. I can keep coming back as long as I'm sincere in my heart. I understand that if I do it, I bring shame upon God. And I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to get my life in line with what I know that's right. Amen. <laughs> if you live unfaithful unto death, he'll give unto you a crown of life. If you so desire to do one or the other to come forth and put Christ on baptism, like I say, I wouldn't leave home. I wouldn't need to go home without it. Because we don't know what's going to happen between here and home. Amen. This is the closest you're going to ever be to God right now. That's it. Don't pass him up. Don't turn your back on him. He's calling you right now. We're going to ask you to come as we stand and sing the song of encouragement. I have decided.